I think we can start, uh, you know, some, you know, old members of our community probably uh, attended uh, Artyom's previous talk when he was talking about conversational, uh, conversational AI and uh, uh, implementation of uh, GPT-3 in, uh, um, in, uh, uh, in, in practice. And um, now uh, Artyom has like new, very exciting development. He's a founder and CEO of X-Human Company. And he leverages uh, deepfake technology and conversational AI to build um, digital humans. And like on a philosophical level, at some point we probably we all will become uh, digital humans, right? And uh, we'll live in metaverse. And today, our John will share like what is uh, underlying technology that they're leveraging to to build. Uh, to build uh, I don't know, Elon Musk or Jesus, right? And, uh, and anyone, anyone we want to talk to and interact. Um, Artyom, thanks a lot for your time. It's a very exciting uh, topic and like very much looking forward to learning. Thank you, Sophia, so much. Thank you for introduction and for inviting me again. Uh, big shout out to Bagal community. Uh, let's start. Uh, my name is Artyom. And today we will talk about digital humans. Uh, what are they? Why do we need digital humans instead of organic ones? Uh, what are the main building blocks of interactive digital humans? Today we will try to find answer on these questions. And uh, in the end, we'll even build a talking AI Jesus because God bless digital humans. Uh, a bit about my background and why I care about digital humans. Uh, while studying at Moscow State University about 10 years ago, I was inspired by a movie called Her and later by Blade Runner. In these movies, uh, we can see that machines could be engaging, caring, and empathetic, that people can enjoy interacting with AI. Also, these movies didn't end well, it's an excellent example of the future inhabited by digital humans. With this inspiration, I decided to focus on building intellectual talking machines. I became a founding machine learning engineer and eventually head of AI at Replica, where my team and I have built one of the most advanced conversational AI on the market. Uh, currently, Replica is the most popular English-speaking chatbot with tens of millions of users, of users worldwide. In addition to the chatbot part, you can select a 3D avatar for your Replica and customize it by choosing clothes, hats, tattoos, and so on. Uh, but here is the problem. Uh, building high quality 3D avatars is hard. It's expensive and time consuming. You need an army of 3D modelers, animators, riggers, and engineers to make it work. Another issue is that you need to run these 3D models on mobile devices uh, in real time, which is challenging, especially on cheap Androids. Finally, after spending a massive amount of time and money, you'll face an uncanny valley problem where your avatars look unrealistic, clumsy, and creepy. Are creepy 3D avatars all we need? Can we do better? I thought maybe it's a good time to move forward and start a new company with the main goal to build a photorealistic digital humans. Uh, now let's talk about what is digital, digital humans. There are many definitions uh, of this term, but my favorite one uh, is this one. Digital human is an AI entity that looks, sounds, and behaves like a real human. Given this definition, we want to create a photorealistic interactive AI avatar. That means we don't want a creepy 3D avatar, as you can see on the right side. But we want to have a high quality, high fidelity photorealistic digital human, as you can see on the left side. Uh, here is a couple of demos of the current state of digital humans. Uh, let's watch the, the first video. Malaria isn't just any disease. It's the deadliest disease there's ever been. Se dice que ha matado más de la mitad de la población que ha existido. Billion million tan no murit qui. Wa ma zala taqtu lo tiflan kull daqiqatayn. Mais nous pouvons y mettre fin. Nous savons comment, nous en avons la possibilité. Ame ora di karvai ki zaruratay. Speak up and say, malaria must die. One voice can be powerful, but all of our voices together, then 
they will have to listen. Malaria must die. All right. As you can see, as they built a digital version of David Beckham, who is a famous soccer player, uh, to make him speak in nine languages. Uh, it's not a perfect example of digital human because it's scripted. Uh, they synthesized video based on pre-recorded audio samples talking in different languages. Uh, but we want more. We want interactive digital humans. Uh, let's see. Let's watch the second video. Good evening. Welcome to GB Steakhouse. I will be your server tonight. Hello, how are you? I am great, thank you for asking. Can I get you started with something to drink? Yes, can we get two red wines and water, please? Sure, I will be right back with your drinks. Thank you, and can we get an extra menu as well? Of course, and here is your wine. Are you ready to order? Uh, this example is quite stupid because you'll need a real waitress to serve you and bring your dinner. But it's a good showcase of uh, the experience we want to have with interactive digital humans. Now, do we really need digital humans? Uh, what can digital humans do that organic ones can't? Uh, first, they don't have lunch breaks, vacations, and time offs. They are hardworking and on duty around the clock. Besides that, they are past. They reply quickly, so you don't need to wait long uh, to get the response. Also, they easily are scalable. You don't need to hire an army of organic humans. Uh, just launch a few more GPU instances serving your AI models. On top of it, digital humans could be personalized and customized uh, for each customer. You can provide digital human with appropriate speaking style, accent, and visual appearance based on user preferences. Finally, digital humans are cost efficient. You don't need to pay salary, give option stocks, PTOs, early bonuses. Just don't forget to pay bills from your uh, cloud provider. Uh, from your uh, cloud provider. Uh, here, is, um, here are a bunch of use cases where digital humans can be helpful. For example, you can use them for entertainment and marketing by creating digital influencers. Think about Justin Bieber with hundreds of millions of fans. Justin can chat with each fan, but AI Justin could do that. His AA copy can interact and entertain fans, promote future concerts, provide and discuss recent news about the real Justin. Or you can build a medical assistant who can take care of older people. Uh, they can track your health and activity status, provide helpful information, and help you live a healthier and longer life. Besides that, such digital, digital human uh, assistants can play the role of mental health therapists, reducing stress and anxiety. Now, let's see how we can build a digital human and which AI components are required. Uh, to build an interactive, photorealistic digital humans, we need to utilize a multimodal AI approach. The basic level is conversational AI. Uh, this level is responsible for digital human intelligence. Our dig digital humans need to understand natural language to reply to users' input and support engaging conversations. On top of conversational AI, we can add speech modality to support more natural interaction. So we can not only chat with our digital humans in text format, but also speak to it. The last level is vision. Uh, it's needed to build a, the photorealistic visual appearance of our digital human. Let's take a look at each modality to understand what is essential for us on each level. As I just mentioned, conversational AI is the brain of our digital humans. We want that our digital humans provide engaging, interactive communications with their users, understand them, and generate appropriate responses. For that, we need a high-quality dialogue model. Also, we don't want to have the same personality for different digital humans. We want to set personality characteristics, such as uh, gender, interests, and background story. Additionally, we may want to control our dialogue model to influence dialogue responses. Uh, for example, we could set a cheerful, informal speaking style for some avatars. For others, we want to have a polite and neutral uh, 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 responses and chat communication. Finally, to avoid inappropriate responses, we might also want to apply some filters on generated responses to detect offensive and low quality uh, 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 replies in chat. The next level is speech. On this level, we need to do, uh, to do two things, recognize and generate speech. 
On one side, we want high quality speech recognition to recognize a variety of accents and speaking styles. Also, if we are going to build a voice call experience, we need to add a voice activity detection model to detect the presence or absence of human speech. On another side, we want high quality speech synthesis. To customize our digital humans, we may want to select different voices, controlling accent, style, and emotions. Uh, the last modality is vision. Uh, to simplify the user experience, we want to create a talking animated avatar from a single photo of a person. Uh, how we can do that? We need two main components for that. First, we want to generate idle animation, where the avatar is moving, blinking, and smiling. The second component is lip sync, uh, which we use to generate speaking animation. Now we can get a fully animated interactive digital human by, by combining idle animations and lip sync animations in the right moments. When our digital human is waiting or listening to a user, we can play a set of idle animations. After that, when our conversational AI model produces a response, we can generate a lip sync video and concatenate it with an idle animation. Also, we can produce entirely AI-generated digital humans. We can synthesize a picture uh, with the face of a non-existent human and then animate it using techniques from idle animations and lip sync. We may also want to change a visual appearance of the avatar and apply some style on it. Now let's see how we can utilize conversational AI, speech, and visual modalities to build our own digital human. Uh, this is a demo of the Botify app that my team and I are developing. In Botify, you can chat with some predefined characters like Bob Marley, Elon Musk, Santa, and so on. Or you can create your own digital human. Let's see how we can create AI Jesus at Botify. So first, you need to select a photo. You can upload your image or choose some uh, uh, default photos. After that, we set a name and enter a few personality facts uh, to shape its character. Uh, these facts could be uh, uh, in a simple way. It's simple sentences like I live in California, I have two dogs, uh, I like pizza, and so on. So here we set personality facts describing Jesus. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Finally, we select a voice and that's it. Jesus is speaking. Jesus. How can I help you? My son, God is holy. Just make a note in your notebook. How in the hell? Be prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, that's easy. Just put my word in it. Okay, get your will ready. Also, you can create a group chat by adding multiple bots to it. Uh, let's see how we can create a group chat where AI Elon Musk talks with AI Jesus. Hi, Elon. I'm watching you closely. Heck, are you a student hacker? Wanna work for Tesla? No, I've almost done my job on the Earth. Ha, we have openings at SpaceX. Do you mean Space Cross? It's mine. Well, I'm CEO and co-founder of SpaceX. God owns everything. Really? Let me check Forbes. I asked God to let you be the number one. You are hired. So this way you can create uh, any chatbot of any personality, create a group chat with these different chatbots and, and make fun. Voila. Uh, it's just the beginning of our journey. I believe that by 2030, people will interact more with digital humans than with organic ones. Uh, here is a short trailer from the movie called Blade Runner. The main protagonist named Kay returned to his home to meet his girlfriend, Joy. Uh, she's really caring, supportive, and fun, and she is a digital human. Imagine the world inhabited by such digital humans. Imagine a college student studying physics and getting a lecture from a digital Einstein. 
or a teenage girl who is a fan of Justin Bieber and can chat, laugh, and dance with a digital copy of Justin. It's an exciting future, but we need to build it first. Our goal is to build a digital human platform that allows everyone to create fully customizable interactive digital people. We're working super hard to make digital humans the way we want them to be, intelligent, interactive, engaging, and useful. We're looking for talented engineers to build this future together. If you are interested, please contact me. Here's my contact details. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to chat with you and answer your questions. Uh, thanks, Artem. Um, my, uh, I have a question. Can you uh, maybe elaborate more on technical level? Like, uh, what are the main challenges in building digital humans? Um, how you collect your data sets? What uh, models are you using? Uh, sure. Uh, let's dive into some technical stuff. Let me return to this picture. Right. So we leverage uh, multiple neural nets or multiple uh, modalities. So for conversational AI, uh, mostly we're working with generative neural nets, with uh, GPT-3-like neural nets that we train on massive amount of dialogues. Uh, we collect the dialogues both from open source and, and closed source. Uh, for example, from Reddit, Twitter, movie subtitles, dial dialogues on the internet, dialogues of our users with, uh, in Botify, and so on. Uh, and then we train like then we collect a hundred of billions of such dialogues and train a, a gigantic neural nets uh, like a GPT Neo or GPT J uh, open source neural nets uh, on this on this data. In this way, we can get uh, a basic uh, dialogue model that can understand natural language, that can understand the chat format and produce uh, 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 general general responses in dialogue. But then we can fine tune uh, these. Uh, basic dialogue model on a small set of high quality dialogues. Um, we uh, labeled a few thousand of dialogues in a way uh, we want our chatbots re reply to dialogues. Uh, we, we labeled high quality uh, specified uh, relevant responses in these dialogues, and then we fine tune this gigantic dialogue model on these specified high quality dialogues. In this way, we can get a uh, high quality dialogue model. Um, that, that can generate a bunch of responses. Then uh, you can use this model to produce few candidates of responses. And you can have another model that ranks these responses and select one uh, the most appropriate for the current user. Uh, we can use different uh, ranker styles. For example, we can fine tune BERT on some user signal. And we can utilize um, different signals from users. For example, we can utilize upvotes and downvotes. That user um, uh, that user said using uh, chatting in Botify AI, and then we can on the first uh, on the first stage we produce a bunch of uh, dialogue responses. On the second stage we score through these responses and select the most appropriate uh, appropriate uh, 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 response and and reply with, with this response to a user. Uh, also, we want to control our dialogue. Uh, in this way, we uh, uh, want to control uh, a style, emotions, topic, and per per personality characteristics of these dialogues. Uh, to do that, we need to collect um, to, to collect and label dialogues with some specific characteristics uh, uh, that we need to use, and then fine tune uh, on these on the dialogues in a way that, uh, for example, you have a dialogue that you know that this dialogue about uh, soccer, uh, it's sentiment positive dialogue. Uh, uh, in informal uh, uh, informal chat style, then you can uh, use a bunch of classifiers to label all your dialogues uh, with different emotions, sentiments, and topics, and use these labels as a condition to your dialect model. So when you generate response, first of all, you set some condition characteristics uh, in the context. For example, I want informal, cheerful dialogue uh, 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 for a soccer topic. And then you provide dialogue context, and then dialogue model condition on this dialogue context on this bunch of labels and produce the relevant response based on, on these uh, uh, control uh, uh, conditions. So you know, in this way, you can uh, build high quality dialogue model, and you can uh, control uh, the style of responses of the dialogue model. 
So uh, it, it was about the, this conversational AI part. Uh, it's the most fundamental part, I would say. Uh, our main focus is to build uh, kind of brains of digital humans. Uh, we're focusing on conversational AI to make it high quality, personalized, and controllable. Uh, I'm wondering when you say uh, personality modeling, and uh, is it um, do you refer it like the way they answer is like a more like positive uh, way of answering, like uh, not uh, like casual? Is this uh, what you're implying, or like there are other like ways to sort of incorporate that uh, personality features? In you? Yeah, uh, by personality modeling, I mean uh, that you can set. Oops. Yeah, uh, so uh, I mean that uh, you can model personality and also also condition uh, on this, uh, make conditioning on these personality sentences when you uh, build your digital human. It works in a way that uh, it's very similar to these uh, conditional labels that you can provide in the daily context. Uh, in this way, you also can provide these personality sentences describing the basic personality. Uh, of a chatbot. So here you can uh, provide uh, like 10, 15 different sentences in a way like, I live in California, I have, uh, I have two dogs, I like pizza and so on. Uh, and uh, your dialect model will condition on dialect context, on some labeled features and on these personality uh, sentences. And it will reply based on, on this personality in the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So I see question, um... Are there any technical limitations for digital humans? Yes. Uh, so uh, we want uh, to build our digital humans from a single photo and uh, make them work in real time. Uh, currently, it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, there are a few startups uh, who uh, built in visual avatars and synthesized uh, uh, token heads. But most of them are using um, uh, are required uh, uh, to spend a lot of time and money to build these avatars because uh, if you want to create high fidelity avatar like do Synthesia, Synthesia is one of the startup who are producing uh, uh, token uh, avatars videos. But to build one custom avatar, for example, if you want an avatar of yourself, uh, you need to uh, record a few hours of video you talking in studio uh, on, a green, on a green screen background, uh, then you need to provide these uh, few hours of video to engineering team. They will fine tune these models and then you will get uh, an avatar, uh, but still you can't synthesize video in real time with these avatars. Uh, so there's two issue with Synthesia that uh, they, uh, they don't want with single photos, uh, they need videos and tons of videos uh, with production quality and they produce responses like in few minutes, not in real time. And here we need to build high fidelity, high quality avatars. Like in Botify, you can build a high quality avatars just from single photo, uh, because that's usually how uh, users expect to uh, ha have their experience. Users don't, don't want to go to production studio and fill themselves for a few hours. They want to upload just one, one selfie and, and get a digital copy of themselves or like uh, their AI girlfriends, uh, Justin Bieber, any, anyone uh, uh, they want actually. So uh, the technical challenge is how to make it work just from single photo and how to also make it work in real time. Because when you, when you uh, create interactive digital human, you want uh, uh, to interact in real time. So you expect that the response latency will be no more than a few, uh, a few seconds. You can, you can wait a few minutes. Yeah. So, and basically, uh, the uh, generative models are, are uh, not helping here, like uh, le leveraging like images of a user to generate uh, like those avatars. Uh, what do you mean? Sorry, I didn't get that. So, so uh, I'm just trying to understand like the, the, the problem of uh, of having the, the, the avatar like uh, our generative models could be helpful here or or they're not uh, providing that uh, level of quality that you're expecting. 
uh, it's actually uh, actually this all are generative models on conversational AI, on speech level, and on visual level. Uh, and for conversational AI, you use GPT-like style uh, language models. Uh, on speech level, you use some wave nets, tachotrons, and so on that generate speech. And on vision level, you use GANs. Uh, you can use style GAN uh, for generate, uh, for synthesize a, uh, a fictional uh, non-existent human. Mm -hmm. You can use uh, uh, first order motion models to make idle animations uh, like we can uh, see here. Uh, we can use also generative GAN-based GAN uh, um, lip sync models to produce uh, 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 speech and lip sync. Uh, so yeah, it's all generative model. Like I would say it's uh, generative AI when you generate uh, text, speech, and visual, uh, uh, and, and visual, and uh, you, you operate with like tens of different generative models. Mm -hmm. I'm going more, moving forward to next question. Chatbots always fail at some percent of cases. In this case, real human support usually. Okay, just a second. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to understand what what was the question. Igor, if you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask your question directly, please feel free to do it. Well, uh, the question is that uh, about uh, chatbots, they always fail at some percent of questions. And in this case, they uh, uh, deliver the task to human support. So how in your case you handle the problem when chatbots, for example, doesn't understand the request, doesn't understand the question? Uh, all chatbots, you can split in two buckets. Uh, it's goal-oriented chatbots and open domain chatbots. Goal-oriented chatbots, it's a chatbot that you usually uh, uh, see and interact with. For example, it's Siri, Alexa, Google Home, customer support bots, bots that can book your restaurant, uh, call your taxi, and so on. Uh, in these chatbots, you, uh, don't, you, want, you don't actually want to talk with person. You want to get things done. You want to solve uh, his problem, his issue, as soon as possible. Uh, we don't do this type of, of chatbots. So we don't operate with customer support. We don't operate on task-oriented level. Uh, we do open domain chatbots. Open domain chatbots mostly used for entertainment purpose. Uh, it's chatbots that can talk about your day, about your life, uh, about your interests, uh, can entertain you, interact with you. For example, like a good use case of this uh, chatbots, for example, you can build AI influencers, like AI Justin Bieber. Uh, or you can uh, create a Jesus and, and talk, uh, talk to him and uh, making fun uh, of it. So we work mostly with open domain uh, entertainment purpose chatbots and we don't need to, uh, to use customer support for that. And with, uh, with open domain chatbots, your chatbot model always know how, how to respond. It always generates some response. It could be not high quality response, but anyway, uh, we don't have this problem with that chatbots uh, don't know what to say or what response to, to users. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a question from Vladislav. How to control the generative model so it doesn't produce conflicting information? For example, not to say another name. And... All right, uh, the question is how to produce responses that it's not contradictive. As a general answer uh, that uh, you need to leverage some high quality data and uh, external databases. So uh, here is not, uh, it's not solved problem yet. Uh, your uh, dialect model can produce sentences like, I like oranges, but I don't like oranges. It's a typical uh, problem and scenario of generative models. Uh, currently, there is a bunch of research who try to solve these problems using external knowledge base, database, knowledge graphs, and so on. Uh, but still, it's pretty hard. So sometimes chatbots can, uh, can reply in this way. Uh, Actually, I can imagine if one human can reply this way, you know, like you can love and hate the same thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. so, I, I, I assume it's also like the, the problem of um, 
uh, you know, like hate speech, right? And be because uh, the, the data is uh, sort of leveraged from internet, right? And like some like uh, like ethical issues as well, right? And uh, it's still... Yeah, for ethical issues, uh, we can add a layer of response filtering. So first of all, we can uh, apply some classifiers, toxicity classifier, bias classifiers on our data set and select only those responses, which is not toxic, uh, uh, not, 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 not open users. But then uh, even if you do that, if you, if you select the high quality responses, this high, high quality uh, dialect data, your dialect model still can produce some uh, offensive responses uh, because users start to append the model uh, 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 first and model just pick up the conversation style. Uh, and here you can apply some filters on the responses uh, candidates, and you can filter out the can. Well, first of all, you can produce a bunch of candidates with your dialect models, with your dialect model, and then you filter out not not good responses. You can classify that this response has high quality, uh, uh, high probability of toxicity, uh, of biases, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I see the question from the same uh, person. Uh, how much does it cost, uh, uh, the pre-train cost uh, of, of models? It's tens of thousands of dollars because to train your basic conversational EA model, uh, you need to uh, train gigantic neural net for a few billion parameters on uh, hundreds of millions of dialogues. And usually you need to use GPU cluster or TPU cluster. Uh, for example, we train in our GPTJ model for 6 billion parameters on hundreds of millions of dialogues for more than three weeks on TPU cluster. And mm -hmm. it costs a few thousand dollars for, for one experiment. And uh, if you're building a conversational AI, you need to run these experiments constantly. So infrastructure cost is one of the issues here. Yeah, um, I see a question from Eric. Is it possible to integrate the visual level with the different voice layers? Uh, Eric, maybe you can elaborate your question if, if you want. Yeah, I, uh, thanks, Sophia. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the vision layer, but we, um, I'm working on bots that ha are task-based. So I'm um, thinking about how our, our task-based bots that support speech can be integrated with the vision layer. Is that possible? Yeah, sure, it's possible, absolutely. You can just apply vision level. Uh, so uh, vision level, it's, it's top, top level. Uh, we have conversational AI speech and then vision. And if you uh, can synthesize speech, if you already have some pre-recorded speech or synthesized speech, uh, you can uh, basically apply this uh, um, so speech recording on top of visual appearance, and you can generate lip sync avatar producing and pronouncing uh, 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 some text. So you don't need to uh, leverage conversational AI all the time. You can just have some pre recorded uh, uh, samples, like we saw the sample with David Beckham. Uh, they just have a bunch of um, pre recorded. Um, uh, audios in in nine languages, and uh, they apply uh, the deep fakes and lip sync of the Beckham on top of these pre-recorded audios. The same you can do with your task-oriented pre-recorded chatbots. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I'd like to do that. I'll follow up with you, Artem. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. Thanks. Also, does does this work outside of the Botify application? Can can yes. you take these and move them into other environments? Definitely, definitely. Uh, we currently, we're building a digital human platform. We're making uh, uh, products in two, in two segments, in B2C and in B2B. In B2C, we provide Botify AI app, which is basically a demo of our technology uh, and ju just a fun app. And for B2B, we provide uh, API access uh, to all the three layers. We can provide API access uh, to generate conversational AI responses, to generate a, a, a speech on top of the responses or to generate idle animations and lip sync. So we can uh, we sell it, or, or we can provide all of these layers, or uh, you, you can select some separate layer. Okay, excellent, thank you. 
Um, I see a question from Mike. Uh, do you fine tune GPT-3 with actual text from the human you are seeking to emulate? Like in case of Jesus uh, with quotes from, from the Bible. And can, can your users contribute to their own training uh, uh, text data? Uh, currently, uh, our training, uh, we don't fine tune our neural nets on each character separately. We don't fine tune GPT-3 separately on Elon Musk dialogues, on uh, Jesus dialogues from Bible, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we utilize uh, this, I'll show you. So we utilize this style of uh, conditioning uh, and uh, uh, of uh, personality simulation. When we describe personality with a few sentences, with like 10, 15 sentences describing the, the uh, character and personality state. And we can, uh, when we produce responses, we condition our dialogue model on these sentences. Uh, of course, it's it won't give you uh, the full sense of personality, the full sense that you're talking with Elon Musk or with Jesus. But uh, by that, it provides uh, to users very uh, high level, convenient way to set up any personality that they want in very simple and quick way. Our main goal is to provide uh, the, uh, the, the fast uh, user experience. So you just add photo, you select voice, you set uh, five, 10 sentences, that's it, you, 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 you get a bot. Of course you can fine tune if you want to emulate, uh, for example, if you want to build a Justin Bieber that perfectly as, uh, emulate his speaking style, uh, uh, he, uh, his words and in general his personality, you can, uh, it would be better if you got uh, his interviews and uh, his dialogues uh, and fine tune neural net on his dialogues. Uh, but it's not scalable approach. Uh, you can fine tune just, uh, you need to fine tune neural net for each personality. Uh, in this case, you need to collect a lot of, a lot of data for each personality. Uh, so we decided to make 80% of work for 20% of effort uh, by providing this uh, simple sentence style uh, uh, personality emulation. Yeah, and at some point, you know, when you see which personalities are more popular, right? And let's say like Elon Musk has lots of tweets, right? Uh, let's say he's like popular personal, uh, like persona, then you can uh, at least like fine tune based on his tweets, right? But not not all all uh, personalities uh, that are available in the app. Yeah, yeah, sure. You you, you can uh, add some tweets. You can add some dialogues and so on. The more information you will add, the more like uh, the more high quality responses and personality related responses you, you, you will have in this way. But again, you need to collect this data, you need to fine tune your know that, and it's not user friendly experience. Yeah, yeah. I see another question. Um, so, do you guys use only sort of GPT like generative models, or also you sort of leverage uh, rule based logic in your training? We don't uh, use rule-based. Maybe we use some rules just to start dialogues. Like we, in Botify, we wrote a few uh, conversation starters, like how Jesus will greet you, how Elon Musk will greet you, and so on. Uh, it, it was only one, uh, one point when, uh, where we use some scripts, uh, uh, pre-generated, uh, uh, like uh, written editor responses, uh, all other logic are all based on neural nets. So we use generative AI models on all three, la uh, all three layers on conversational AI, uh, speech and vision level. And we don't want to use rule-based uh, approach because also it's not pretty scalable. Uh, as we are working with open domain dialogues in open domain, uh, there is no frequent use cases besides uh, hi, how are you? Uh, it's uh, all a long, long tail of different responses. Uh, users can talk about any topic and you want to maintain the high quality conversation on, on these topics. So it's almost not impossible to do with, with scripts, with rule-based approach. Mm -hmm. 
So I see Igor is asking, how can you provide real Justin Bieber with some like control over what he's saying in his uh, digital representation? Mm -hmm. uh, we're working. Uh, uh, we're, we're working to build controllable uh, uh, generation and provide uh, as many different handles as possible uh, and uh, handles uh, and controllers as possible. So you can uh, imagine your uh, uh, producer of Justin Bieber, and you want to create his own a avatar, and you want to set up a uh, general attitude, a uh, topic that Justin Bieber uh, that AI Justin Bieber uh, will discuss, uh, sentiment, uh, keywords, and so on. And so uh, we're building uh, a platform on which basically anyone can customize and control. Uh, this, this, uh, 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 these properties uh, of dialogue. Uh, I hope it's it's uh, answered uh, uh, your question. So uh, um, in general, you, you can't uh, influence on each response, but you can influence on general attitude and character of your chatbot. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Artyom. Um, so I see another question about uh, commercial use of digital humans. What what are the use cases you guys uh, focus right now? Uh, so the commercial use. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many industries who uh, can uh, uh, benefit from utilizing digital humans. Uh, one of the industry is uh, entertainment. As I mentioned, we can build a celebrities and digital uh, 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 celebrities. Uh, there is a bunch of uh, application when uh, or, uh, currently there is a trend that uh, it start to appear a lot of virtual influencers and virtual celebrities when they uh, build some high, fidel high fidelity 3D models for themselves and running Instagram account, Twitter and so on uh, for entities that doesn't exist uh, and we can provide uh, there is an issue on the market that uh, many companies can build high quality models and uh, this kind of avatars making uh, 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 social media influencers, but none of them can build brains for these avatars. So we can provide brains for these uh, di digital uh, celebrities and digital influencers. Uh, another use case uh, is uh, we can apply it for uh, metaverses and games. Uh, the same problem uh, in uh, currently metaverses are empty, uh, and you need to uh, make some. You need to solve a chicken and egg problem. Uh, there will be users in metaverses where uh, there are another users, and it seems that uh, smart NPCs could be a good gateway uh, to metaverses. If the metaverse will be inhabited by smart NPCs that can interact and entertain you, users will, will use it. Uh, so we, we also partner with some game dev studios and metaverses to bring this sentence to, to NPCs. Uh, yeah, so also you can see actually here. Uh, also you can use it for marketing purpose. You can generate uh, some uh, avatar uh, for uh, for, for, for retail or for sales that can uh, reply to your questions, that can uh, sell, uh, 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 sell you uh, some stuff and, and provide the customer support. Okay, cool. So I, I see a question from Yana, though I think we somewhat addressed that question. Uh, does the bot's personality influence the way uh, they express uh, emotions? Yes, the bot personality uh, influences the way they express emotions. For example, here, here you can uh, 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 describe sentences like "I am very positive person" or "I'm very uh, 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 depressed person," and this will influence the way so the bot will reply in the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, do you control emotions of vision model? So, are they uh, do they correlate with um, conversational emotions? Uh, currently, we don't control uh, visual emotions. We uh, generate emotions in kind of neutral slash positive style. 
so you, you, you can see the, the, the neutral phase uh, expression on these avatars. So we, we provide kind of neutral idle animations and neutral lip sync, uh, but it's a good idea to incorporate emotions. And if you're making an angry Elon Musk, it, uh, it should behave appropriately and should generate an angry facial expression. Uh, it's, it's our next step to also control the visual appearance. But I assume there's also this technical challenge of uh, having enough data set, right, to, to train model to like on to, to have all those variety of emotions, right? Yeah, because uh, um, usually you use data sets, for example, YouTube videos, when uh, somebody giving interviews or somebody talking, you use these data sets as your training set. And usually uh, there's not, not a big variety of, of emotions of uh, 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 of characters and, and people uh, you know, on YouTube videos that you use for train, uh, train uh, uh, your models. So yeah, you need to collect a diverse data set of different emotions, uh, uh, different faces. Uh, do you guys have other questions? Okay. Okay, I see a question from uh, Andrew. Do you have some mechanism uh, to keep user involved all the time? For example, once user will run out of questions, so you know how they can be engaged uh, with the product. Mm -hmm. uh, the honest answer currently, we, uh, we don't do that. Uh, we don't have a mechanism of user engagement, but uh, it should be based on the quality of dialog model. So dialog model itself should understand that users uh, don't don't know what, what, what to talk next, and it should should generate appropriate responses with questions with some specific information, uh, and we try to solve this on the dialog model level. To uh, on each dialog turn, you need to provide uh, high engaged. Uh, relevant uh, uh, response to, to user. So user want to uh, continue, continue this, this interaction in general. So actually our main goal is to, as we work in, in open domain conversational AI, our main goal is to increase the length of uh, dialogue conversation. In this way, we want to provide that each response will be as engaging uh, as possible for, for, uh, for, for user. So we're trying to solve this problem on data level. Mm -hmm. So Eric is asking, can uh, 3D visualizations be supported? Uh, here, uh, we don't work with 3D visualization and with 3D models uh, because I, I'm bullish on, on 3D models. I, mm, it's very hard actually to uh, build high quality 3D models. As I mentioned, it's, uh, for my opinion, it's one of the major issue of Replica. Uh, when you start to build 3D models, especially when you start to animate, um, uh, to make facial animation uh, of 3D models, uh, the human brain, uh, th there is a huge problem of uncanny valley, where you have very cartoon style avatar or very photorealistic avatar, uh, you, you like their appearance. But if it's something in between, uh, you start to, uh, your human brain start to think that uh, here's something wrong. With, with visual appearance, as, as, um, especially with facial expressions. So I'm not really sure that we need to proceed with 3D avatars, at least right now. Uh, so we, we don't do that uh, currently. We're working only with 2D, uh, 2D photorealistic videos. Mm -hmm. So uh, Igor is asking, uh, do chatbots have the database? Can they learn and collect information from the user for different purposes? Uh, they can. Uh, we, we can uh, classify each user response and uh, put it in, in right buckets. For example, we can uh, classify uh, some information, some personal information user uh, uh, said to us. For example, if user said, uh, mentioned uh, his or her uh, gender, interests, uh, profession, and so on. We can uh, remember these, these facts, to use these facts in dialogues. Uh, also, we can uh, store some uh, speaking style uh, 
some uh, uh, sentences relevant to speaking style or of user to condition on these sentences to provide the appropriate responses. So for example, if user uh, use a lot of uh, slang, typos, and so on, we can also support this conversation style and uh, reply back with typos, uh, uh, slang, and so on. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, I, think, I think we can wrap up for today. Um, and thanks a lot, Artyom, for, for your time and for your presentation. Uh, good luck with the, with the company. And uh, maybe later when you guys have build more cool stuff, we can again get together and learn more about building digital humans. Uh, guys also want to remind you next week on Friday, we will have bug out happy hour. It's just, we're getting together, like talking, getting to know each other, you know, sharing our experiences. Um, actually talking not only about machine learning, but also crypto technology, life, anything. Uh, so um, feel free to join us next week if you want. And uh, thanks, Artyom, very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sophia, for, for inviting me. It was really great questions uh, here. Uh, feel free to, to ask me, uh, to, to reach me out. Here's my contact, uh, contact uh, details. If you want to reach me, to chat with me, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, also Artyom is uh, in our bug out Slack, so you can also send questions there. If you are not in Slack, please join and uh, I will also share the video recording uh, in our Slack. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.